So the, the hemlock woolly adelgid um, it, it, it was a pest that came into the eastern United States in the 1950s on um, actually some nursery material uh, into the Richmond area. And then it has slowly spread out from the Richmond area to uh, every state from Maine down into Georgia. And it first arrived in West Virginia in the early 90s. <laughs> so, um, and then it's been spreading out. It's now in uh, 40 counties and probably actually 41. And um, unlike some of the other things, there are some other pests that we're worried about that there's not a lot we can do. Um, this pest we can actually treat we, there are ways to treat for it, which is what we're doing. And um, the problem is, is that like you have to treat with you have to treat the individual tree. You can't right now. There's nothing available that we can use to fly over and spray a whole forest. It's a white woolly mass on the underside of the needles that kind of individually it kind of looks like the tip of a Q-tip, but um, in certain parts of the state, because of, again, and probably because of the the um, warm winter it'll look like you have thousands of those little things all over the underside of the needles. And they're very thick right at this time and very bright white. Sometimes you can see them from just looking at the top of the branch, but it's better to flip it over and look at the underside because sometimes they'll be smaller or harder to see. And there's nothing else that looks quite like it. It's like a pile of snow or cotton on the underside. Uh, there are times of the year when it's a little harder to see that over, they actually hibernate in the summer. So it's the best time to look is probably like October to early June for these things. It, this is part of the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid Suppression Program that we have, which, and um, basically what we're doing is um, injecting this hemlock tree with a pesticide that kills the Hemlock Woolly Adelgid. Um, we use this method where, uh, as you can see, we're very close to water. Um, and so that the chemical doesn't get into the water where it can be very toxic to uh, aquatic insects. Basically what happens is this, uh, this little bottle contains the pesticide and we pump it up with a bike pump and then it pushes it out through all these tubes into these holes that we've drilled in the trees. And um, then it goes up into the vascular system of the tree and the, the adelgid insects feed on it out on the needles of the trees. So one, a single treatment like this lasts about four to five years and what we, the, um, when we're further away from water we can use a soil treatment that lasts about four to five years. Um, we are going to try out a new chemical this year that works faster than this um, but it only lasts one to two years. Um, so, but, um, so, but in those areas of the state where because of the warm winter we had um, there's a really heavy adelgid population. We think if we combine some of these treatments that we can knock it back and then have the longer effect with the other chemicals. So we are trying to do some biocontrol in other parts of the state. We haven't done it where we're standing, um, um, but it, mainly in the southern half of the state for um, since the early 2000s, we've been releasing a beetle which has been shown if, uh, effective uh, further south and actually Maryland has been seeing some good effects from it um, and we've been finding it in a lot of the places that we've released it but we haven't seen any knockback in the actual adelgid populations yet from it but we're hopeful that as it it does build up slowly so we are hopeful that as it builds up that we'll start to see some more impact from it. We tag the trees um, to mark it uh, that we've treated this tree so um, and that's for a variety of things. For one, when we use pesticides, we have to keep a record. So it's good to know in some way that we've treated this tree and that our records go with this individual tree. Also, um, it's, we can, we, since these trees have, an, this tag is actually tr uh, number 3002. And we, so we can come back over time and actually track the health of this tree to see whether the, the treatments that we've done were effective. Um, We've also this year, um, it's hard to see on this tree, but we've added a paint dot because when we're in campgrounds, people will often rip these tags off. So, um, and a lot of damage is done. So it's hard for us to find these trees again. So it's, 
if you see one of these tags, it would be great if you could leave it alone so that we could find it again. <laughs> There's several reasons for that, and that we fight the hemlock woolly adelgid is that, and this is a prime example of where these hemlock trees, where they hang out over rivers, help to shade the rivers and keep it cool, and the, uh, uh, and therefore making it good habitat for trout. Um, the trout needs cooler water so that the oxygen levels will stay higher in the water. Um, and this helps, so treating trees can help with that. But also, um, it's probably hard to see right now, but we're actually in a campground. So hemlock in a campground is an aesthetically very pleasing tree. And, you know, um, it's just nice to have them around. They provide a nice, dark, cool place when it when it's 90 degrees elsewhere in the summer. Uh, and here, it'll be probably quite a bit cooler with all these hemlock trees.